Hi, Tommy. Hi, Linda. It's so nice so, to see you. Everything looks very slick where you are. I'm fine, dear. How are you? I'm really well. I'm I'm lucky to be isolating. It looks slick because I'm isolating with my fella, Patrick Biller, who's a contributing photographer at House and Home, as you know. So he's behind the camera. I've got a lav mic, so I have clean audio. Only because we just happen to have all of this equipment. Well, la di da. Come and wave to Linda. I'm Patrick. sitting here by myself. Well, Michelle's in the kitchen with Archie. Hey, Hello. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I have my headphones on. I have my laptop. I have no partner who knows how to do anything like that. <laughs> well, I'm very, very fortunate to have someone to help me with all of this because, as you know, we've known each other a long time, decades actually, yes. and I am a Luddite when it comes to this sort of stuff. I'm used to being in front of the camera, not behind it. So I would have been yes. useless if I was well, by myself. Look fabulous! You got everything staged. Like somebody, good eyes. Somebody's yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, so Linda. How are you, dear? What's happening with you? Well, Patrick and I have been in isolation for nearly a month now. Um, so we are doing our part. We're doing our patriotic duty and our cultural duty in staying at home, being safe, only going out when needed, not buying more than we need being really super responsible about that stuff. I've actually taken it on as a real, you know, almost military exercise. We're very, very, very vigilant. Um, so important. Yes, it's very important, especially because we're not um, people who live in a rural environment. I have plenty of friends who are fortunately able to isolate on farms and places where you're not near people. I live right in downtown Toronto in Cabbage Town. It's a very busy neighborhood. There's a lot of Toronto community housing here, a lot of social services, yep. people who have mental health challenges who might we not need be help. Yeah, who might not be able to deal with this in the way that we get news media every day, might not have access to information. So we're trying to do our best to help within our community and also do our part as individuals. Sounds right. So you're in a house in Cabbage Town. Yes. You're in your dining room, maybe? No, actually so. Very recently, um, with her support and encouragement, I left Sarah Richardson Design and struck out on my that. own. I read that. Um, and so this happened literally a few weeks before the blankety blank hit the fan. And so here I was, you know, I live upstairs in this townhouse, in a Victorian townhouse. The downstairs area was uh, available. You know, this is a, a building that I rent. And so I quickly renovated with the help of a couple of colleagues who were going to be working with me here. Um, and we got almost finished uh, when everything sort of, you know... Don't Instagram it. Send, send the scouts to House and Home. I will. Okay. I, I don't... Uh, so right before everything happened and we shut down culturally and municipally and in the entire nation, we were almost at the finish line. So what I have here is my office space, what will be my office space for my own company. And it is probably about 85 to 90% finished. The electricians were the last guys who were scheduled to come in and they never made it here before the shutdown. But tell me, Tommy, how are you feeling? I mean, it's both exciting mm -hmm. and scary at the same yeah, time, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. I've done it, we've all done it. Yes, we've all done it. And for me, you know, I'm gonna be 50 years old in July. So I sort of felt that at this milestone in my life, if I was ever gonna hang my own shingle, this was the time to do it. You look the, good. Oh, thank you so much. I, yeah. I, I, I try, <laughs> you, know, you know, we gays have a lot of creams and a lot of help, you know? But yeah, I, you help us too. <laughs> I, yes, we do actually. We uh, have a symbiotic relationship, our, our two uh, uh, categories. But, but I, you know, I really wanted to sort of see what life would be like outside of the structured environment of Sarah Richardson Design. Sarah's always been super supportive of me doing my own thing and having my own projects. And this was just an extension of that. She, as she would say, I'm now Tommy at large. Um, and that's sort of how she sees my foray. What's your out. firm called now? Well, we're tentatively going to call it Tom. Um, okay. So it's the shortest form of my first name. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a group of people, uh, like a partnership of people. Um, mm -hmm. And the T is for traditional and the M is for modern. And the mm -hmm. O in the middle is just sort of a symbol. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm developing right now. But to be perfect. Organic. Very organic. I mean, you know me, <laughs> Linda. I'm a real open book. OK, let's talk about design and decorating. Yeah. You're sitting in this cool room yeah. and behind you is a fireplace which you probably painted yes we did yeah yes 
That uh, got done favorite before. black? What's your favorite black? My favorite black is actually Off Black by Farron Ball because yes. it's not quite it. black. I have it to looks... take notes. This is my favorite part of, of Housebound episodes is getting the paint, paint colors. colors. I, I... <laughs> everybody wants their favorite designer's favorite colors. Well, Linda, for your readers and your listeners, I think it's such great information too because you can still order paint for safe yep. pickup. Um, or delivery from a lot of suppliers. And that's one of those things that's a very good do-it-yourself project. See? I know it. I have my paint list right here. I love like, it. Of all the paint colors that designers have given me over yeah. these episodes. And it's not as if I can't look through the millions of pages of House and Home over the years, but I just want to know what the color is that you're sitting in front of. Well, that's your special talent. I mean, you know, you're a publisher. Leave it to a publisher to have a notebook on hand and making, Off you know, black notes of things. Off black Okay, and, and your, what, what are your walls? Uh, the walls in here are, I think they're pavilion gray, an, another F&B color. Um, Gorgeous. And then the floors are painted. You can't really see them now, but maybe when I get up, uh, and walk around a little bit, you'll see in a few minutes. But the floors we had painted, they were very, very old oak floors. And starting a new business on a budget, we didn't have enough money to replace the floors throughout the main floor. So yep. we just painted these old oak floors in cloud painted white. floors are so cool. Yeah, it's just Benjamin Moore's cloud white. You know, the, the tried and true, tested Is classic. That, oh, that's, oh, of course, that's the classic. Is that what you're using on the trim too? Yes, that's what's on the trim as well. Makes it easy for painting the floors. You know, like yeah. we, if so you hit the baseboards, you don't care. Is your trim, count. Tommy, in cloud white? Is it semi-gloss or is it satin or is it, what is it? It's satin. I don't like to go all the way up to semi-gloss anymore. It's funny, early in my career, I did a lot of very high gloss paint. Yeah. Um, and lately we've been moving much more toward a more eggshell, flat or semi-gloss yeah. kind of a thing, satin. Or you said a satin. Satin, yeah. It's a little less, a little duller than a semi. Can so I mean. more? Do we, I get to see anything? Yeah, I can show you a little bit now. The lights? Can't we just, let's just go without a net. Oh, it's warts, <laughs> you know me, it's warts and all. I don't care if anybody Before. sees the behind the scenes. <laughs> so hang on, I'm gonna come around and grab my laptop. Okay from the stand. Ooh, there's a close-up of my chest. Good thing I went to the gym before all this happened. So that's an armoire that was my mom's. We're going to use that for storage. You yep. can see... Beautiful. Antiques are back. Not that they ever left. So that the room back thought, there... Yeah, the people who thought antiques left are so now saying they're back. This is part of the office back here. You can see yep. that currently Patrick has it set up as a yoga and Pilates studio. Perfect. The little door there leads to the powder room that we had put in. I got that yep. from the door store. Lovely Layla helped me out at the door store. The air conditioner didn't get replaced before things fell apart and certainly the light fixture also did not. <laughs> but we get wonderful light from this front window. And you window. have the nice original rosettes yep. on the ceiling. Kept as much original as we could. Um, yep. And then you can see down there, there's the floors. That's oh, yeah, a little bar great. cart that I bought for Jan Arden's condo, which we're gonna be doing. She has a little yep. pied-à-terre in Toronto. Yep. Um, and I'm gonna be helping her out with that. And I'm sure that your readers will get a good glimpse. How often do you use architectural antiques when you're renovating for clients? All, every time they will let me. <laughs> it is a it's suggestion funny that every time. It, is, do you get resistance? Do you find it's like, well, they don't really want to bother? Well, you and I both know there are sort of two groups of people. People who are open to or enthusiastic about vintage and antique, and people who do not want old things in their house, period, and full stop. Right. I've worked with both um, and work well with both. Yeah. But my natural inclination, my personal taste, um, which you can't always impose 100% on clients, is certainly veering towards antique and vintage That's things. That's interesting you would say that because personally I use them for myself, mm -hmm. for my own homes and projects, but mm -hmm. I've never used them for a client because of all of what you just said. Yeah. And yet when people admire your work at home, yeah. often what they're admiring are those finds. Well, you know, and you know, unexpected kooky things that give it the character. A hundred percent. Like I loved your conversation um, on Homebound with Colette. You know, she's and great. when she was talking about eccentricity and things, I mean, I hope that I do call that proud. She's a good friend um, and I, I admire her work and of course Nikki's as well. Um, but you know, that little bit of eccentricity goes a long way in terms of longevity of the design and decor that you're executing. Yeah. You and I know that, you know, the timelessness comes from the soul that's really intrinsic to those antique and vintage things. History, yeah. 
Now behind you, there's a mantelscape, which is mm -hmm. very cool. Oh, thanks. And I, when, when I find myself at home much more than ever before, yeah, that's what I'm tending to do with my time. I'm tending to go around the house yeah. and restyle all those opportunities. Yes. So that I, because don't you feel that that we don't change it up enough? So that's, we're, you know, we're like the shoemakers' kids with no shoes. We come home, and the last thing we want to do is style our mantle. A hundred percent. But we're also doing a lot of online meetings and social gatherings, whether it's a fam jam or, or this, a work meeting, this, or, what or we're doing. yes, this. what you and I are doing. So I try to switch up the styling in my backdrop as much as possible, and that's something that I've been talking to colleagues about. I did a little chat with Marilyn Dennis the other day about it. But also, I came prepared for this because I know you ask people about the books that they have on hand. So I also wanted to say that Susanna what Salk... What have you got for me? So Susanna Salk um, did yes. this wonderful little book that has a little of my work in it from um, ah. the past. Now this okay. book is called It's the Little Things. And it's the Little Things. It's an incredibly valuable thing for right now because we are basically using the things that we have in our homes to try to yep. reimagine our environments. Maybe it's our Zoom backdrop. Whatever we're doing with our stuff, there are amazing suggestions of things to do. So Wrote the little, the little subtitle salt. here the little is things. creating big moments in your home through the stylish small stuff. Now, Tommy, yeah. when Colette took me on a little tour, yes. she showed me a dirty secret or two. Oh my gosh. He I calls them dirty secrets. Oh little my gosh. areas of her house where she's <laughs> working, yeah. where she's built, putting together a scheme for a client. Yeah. And then suddenly we were sitting at a table just like yours and I mine. Remember. And suddenly she tipped the camera down, the mm -hmm. laptop, and I got to see a pile of crap on the floor. And it was, yeah. you know, samples and drawings and, st and it was beautiful. Yeah. Do you have yeah. any dirty secrets for me? No, because I saw Colette do that. And so I cleaned up before oh. <laughs> we went on camera. <laughs> But I will so show no you. there's no space you're going to show us today that might be a little surprise. I'll take you upstairs and show you my upstairs hallway, which I have Thank done you. as a gallery. And Thank you. You know, it sort of brings about a conversation that I like to have in design, which is about hallways. They are conduit spaces, but they are also rooms within our homes. Mm -hmm. And they're so often neglected from a decorating perspective, but there's such an opportunity there. All the you're kinds so right. of things that you apply to any other room in the house, lighting, furniture, artwork, paint colors, flooring materials, all go into a hallway. And when you think about it, we spend a lot of time in those spaces because it's how we get from one place to the other. In many cases, we spend more time in those spaces than we do in the individual other rooms. So I'm Important. gonna show you, you the hallway. Do you have one you're gonna show us? Say your prayers. We're Is going this like up a segue stairs. into a hallway? Yeah. Okay, good. So say see. your prayers, we're going up my stairs. All right, okay, you good. ready? Okay, good. This is the entrance hall here. So that's where you come in to the office. And I've got this wonderful um, 1930s coat rack yep. sort of thing that I bought at ZigZag, one of my favorite retailers of vintage okay. modern things. Okay. So now I'm taking you upstairs. I'm going to try not to break my neck in doing okay, that. Okay, you're doing fine. So this is the and apartment. I, and I'm glad you're doing it. This is the apartment where Patrick and I live upstairs. Oh, and you have gallery style, wall to wall hanging art. Yeah. I love it, love so it, I'm love I'm going to put this down and see if I can sort I of step it. away a little bit. Okay, so this is sort of, you know, my friend, gallery. my friend and colleague, um, Philip Mitchell, Yep. And I both are sort of well known for doing these really over the top, sort of very eclectic art installations. Yep. And the art that I have here is also very eclectic. You know, I have a Charlie Pachter, I have a Barbara Kruger uh, mm -hmm. artist multiple. I have some very cheeky things like something from um, Panzias Ceramics. I have a poster from the 80s. Um, I'll show you this one here. Do you, can you read that? Yes, I can't read it, but it says, it, well, I, have I, this, have the I have the simplest simplest? of tastes. I yeah. only want the best. <laughs> Very <laughs> so, good. And then, so if you look back, I'll step sort of to the side. All the way down there is an original Keith Haring um, art poster from the 80s advertising a gallery show that he did. Okay. That's a really good sight line. Yeah. And I want our viewers to pay attention to that because you've painted the wall dark yeah. at the end. That's I mean, downpipe. Pardon? That's downpipe. 
downpipe. So I know you love uh, your colors, your paint colors. So I'll tell you also that in the hallway, it's painted, the gallery walls are painted uh, pink ground by Ferro and Ball, which is a very, okay. very pale millennial pink. Downpipe and pink ground. Yeah. But what I like about the end of the hall is that it draws my eye because of the colors. Oh, good. I'm glad that it's you think fantastic. that. fantastic. Well, I'm a big Keith Haring fan. I'm a child of the 80s. It was my era. It was my coming of age time. So it's a, it's a great reminder of Downpipe. his work. And, and pink what? Pink ground is the pink gallery, ground. the hall gallery. Okay, so did you hang this wall? Are you kidding the me? gallery walls are a challenge. Oh my gosh, absolutely not. I used okay. an incredible service. Good to know. <laughs> uh, so a little dirty secret there. Um, I use an incredible service called Artstall. And mm -hmm. I've nicknamed them the hipster hangers because these very attractive young men with clipped beards come by and perfectly coiffed hairdos. And if you're organized enough, you know, you pay them by the hour, but they're very fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a challenge. I think I have over 70 pieces of art in this hallway and it took the better part of a day. So what I do is I kind of have a general idea of where I want things to be. Then the amazing team at Artstall comes to do the installation and I kind of direct them like a synthetic like a symphony conductor. You know, I'm, I'm sort of like there as a, as a producer. And then they actually do the work. And yeah. it always turns out magnificently. I use them for clients. I've flown them all the way down to the US to do jobs. Okay, we have to stop now. Yeah. Because there are a whole bunch of people watching who are thinking, excuse me, you, you can't, can't pick, pick up a hammer and nail. Yeah. What's your problem? Yeah. So we have to discuss this because okay. it does sound like a ridiculous luxury. But the truth is, mm -hmm. It's worth it because you it don't is. end up with 10 holes behind mm -hmm. every piece of art that you then have to patch and repaint. Yes. Right. Yes. You, if, if the work is valuable, then, you know, you're, you're help, you're serve, you're preserving your art. Yes. And you know, it's like you pay people to do other things that are important to you. Of course. It's not such a big deal. That's right. It's, and, and it's also often they're artists and this is their gig on the side to support, support themselves, themselves until they can, you know, make a living selling their work and you're mm -hmm. helping them. That's a hundred percent true. And, and I, like most people spend money on things that are extremely challenging and important and then save okay. elsewhere. You know, I have smaller installations in other rooms in the house, the guest room, the master bedroom that you I have done, done myself. Yeah. But I, if I'm tackling one room, 70 pieces, yeah. I need help. Oh yeah. Forget that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you're standing in front of a, a red uh, picture frame. Yeah. And that one of the things that, we talked we're talking about in the June issue of House mm -hmm. and Home things mm -hmm. that you can do at home that aren't expensive yeah to make a difference oh yeah we can't just talk about throw pillows no um, but I found I've I have lots of paint cans of leftover paint from projects yeah and sometimes they're just fabulous colors that nobody would go for yeah and I'm painting a few picture frames I think that's a terrific idea you know like one mustard I want a mustard picture frame. I have this amazing piece over here. I'll just pull it off. This is by uh, Joanna Strong, who's a yeah. Toronto artist. I have an obsession with elastic band balls, and she's wow. a hyper-realist painter. Wow, that looks so real. But this frame wow. was created for me by Allen Gallery, and we couldn't find a red floater. So they yeah. painted it red for me because I wanted yeah. a red frame. So this frame is a professionally done frame, but it was painted by hand. Yeah, you know, exactly. just just like you could do and are doing. So you know, there's lots of there are lots of things that I do myself. Lots of things that I have professionals come in to do, but when it comes to an installation of this scale, it was really important to me to have help. Now, where are you taking me now? Uh, we're going to go back downstairs, I think. Okay. But I'll take you a little further in here, okay? Okay, I'm going to bring you a little further in and just give you a little bit of a close-up of the vignette that's at the end of the hallway here. We just have a little, at the bottom of the stairs, just a little area. Oh, it's that's charming. Antique bench that belonged to my late grandmother, Dorothea Smythe, also an interior designer. It's charming. The fabric is a Donegal tweed in two tones of green that I brought back. It was the, really the only souvenir that I brought back from my trip to Ireland, uh, which is my ancestral home. This is a little glimpse into the real, that's the guest room. Nice. Stuff happening I in know there. this look. That's me. Your Tommy. Yeah, I know that look. Me. I know that green. I know that and then plaid. I know. It's, yes. This it's, is some of the artwork. All over it. I think we should go downstairs and you should give me a little gossip before we go. Okay, let's do it. Come on down.
There might be something. Patrick's going to follow me, and I'm going to try not to break share. my neck as we do this. Oh, and as we go down the stairs, there's my little four-leaf clover from Angus and Company. Remember when Michael yeah. Angus used to sell those? Are you editing? Are you finding yourself with time at home throwing things away? Not as or much giving as... them away or putting them in a box to think about what you're going to do with it? Are you editing? Not as much as I should be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really I, should I, be. I allow myself an hour a day. Yeah, that's good advice. To edit. That's very to, good advice. And to, you know, if I haven't looked at a book in 10 years, it's mm -hmm. probably going. Okay, that's good. You know, I have yeah. um, the great advantage of living on a fairly busy street. So when I cast off magazines, old magazines, never House and Home, but other old magazines, um, and when I cast off books that I'm done with, uh, they're gone in about 10 seconds. You know what one of the nicest things is that people write to us about? In fact, a lady wrote to us about a month ago, and she said she was downsizing. Mm -hmm. It seems to happen with that crowd who are yeah. downsizing, who have been subscribers for 33 years. Amazing. And she had her collection of 33 years of House and Home. Oh, I love that. And she sent us a photo of it. And she said she isn't going to have room in her next place, her condo, for yeah. 33 years of House and Home. And would we like it? What? Which was so generous. Incredibly. We, we have our own archives. We asked her if she would donate it to some of the design schools. Oh, yeah. Need it oh, for sure. they don't have archives like that. No. And, and sometimes they digitize them, and which we do. But that was so cool. And I think it's so cool. she spent an afternoon going through old issues in memory lane and you know, I do that sometimes. Oh my gosh, Linda, some of my favorite issues of House and Home magazine have been where you've done a deep delve into the past. Yeah. Um, the roundups of like the best rooms yeah. of 25 years, because yeah. you're looking at old work by like Sharon yeah. Mimran. I think that could have been done yesterday. Do I think one of your forthcoming columns should not be a travel one, just one month. Okay. Do one on Pick your, the rooms that influenced you the most over the years. Okay. Well, you know what, Linda? Because You're the boss, it'll be so I can make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to make that happen. If you want it, you got it. <laughs> okay. So, Tommy, this has been great. Yes, it's been really lovely and, talking to anything you. Anything you want, any message you want to send out to these future clients before you go? I just want to say, you know, to the future clients, you know me. You know what I do. I'm good at you know, it. They know where to find you. I'm okay with it. They know where to find me. But what I really want to say is to my fellow designers who are not necessarily the titans at the top of the heap who are struggling, yeah. who are small business owners, I am with you. Yeah. I am like you. I am experiencing all of the same struggles, financial, fear factor based. We can help each other. We can help each other. We can raise each other up. We can support each other in any way we can. And I'm available and I'm here. You can direct message me on Instagram if you just want to vent and talk about it. I have a website, just a splash page at triple W Tommy Smythe dot com. Triple W Tommy. Okay. Is, it's your, is this new? Yeah, it's just tommysmythe.com. Okay. It's not a full website yet, but all my contact information is there. And Good. I just want people to know that they're not alone. You know, I've spent so much of my adult life in design in, and in design media, connecting with people and letting them know that I'm here to listen. I'm here to help in any way that I can or am qualified to do. And Especially that, the young designers who, you know, thought they would be interning. This yeah. Summer. Oh, listen. And they can't interview. There's just, you know, they're probably wondering what's going to happen. Well, what's Everyone gonna happen is. is we're all going to reopen. Mm -hmm. We're all going to rebuild. Yes. And there'll be room for them. 100%. And 100%. in the meantime, we are all going to stay home. We're mm -hmm. all going to enjoy whatever it is that home means to each of us. Mm -hmm. And when this and is all over. Touch. Yeah. And when this is all over, we're going to open our hearts and then our doors and then our arms. And we're all going to see each other again. And I'm going to give you a big hug. Thank you, Tommy. Thanks, Thank Linda. you, Patrick. Lots of love. You look good, by the way. Good lighting. Thank you. <laughs> See you soon, I hope. Yeah, Bye, me too. Tommy. Thank, Thank you. you.